By 2025, will Intel have scaled the foundry business to the point where it can compete head to head with TSMC or anybody else uh, for that matter well, for the most lucrative deals? Uh, simple answer is absolutely. You know, we are you know, putting fabs in the ground. That was part of the announcement yesterday with our two new Arizona fabs that we're putting in place. We're also announcing that we'll expect our next sites in the US and in Europe to be announced within the next year. So we're definitely leaning into this with the capital investments required. We're also open for business today. We already do a bit of foundry business and that's accelerating immediately. We're also engaging with these customers you know, these big uh, potentials. I had emails with several of them already this morning uh, <laughs> of their interest and the next steps that we're going to take with them. Let's start off with Intel, Jim. You've been a critic uh, of the yes. company in the past. We've uh, talked a good deal about it, of course. In fact, we broke the news of Mr. Gelsinger's arrival right here uh, on this program at exactly this time. Not that many weeks ago, he is firmly in control now, setting a new plan, he says and obviously investing a lot. They are going to be outsourcing more than they had in the past, but he says they're back. Do you agree? Well, I think, first of all, he's got some bravado. Uh, he certainly is making a statement. He is on uh, our network later today. Uh, there is a, let's say, a, a, a kind of a level of excitement from a man who started at Intel uh, when he was 18, and he just did put on a great show, and the conference call was terrific. Do I think he got a free pass? Yes. Because in the end, he did guide below consensus. I think if you try to do what he wants to do with Taiwan Semi and build your own foundries and also use Taiwan Semi, Taiwan Semi will cut you off. I think that AMD has been lost in the shuffle, yet AMD is probably a couple years ahead of Intel. Well, Intel is already coming back in PCs and emerging <laughs> as a competitor to TSMC. Oh, please. <laughs> oh, please. Lisa Su, has, uh, she has a lead. Her, her most recent statements and the most recent conference call showed that she's become partners with a lot of companies that I never thought she'd partner with. And I really think that we have to start recentering on the idea that Pat is a great showman. I mean, when he comes on today, you are going to hear that Intel's back to the days of Andy Grove. And I wish that were the case. Intel's not back that fast. I mean, Mr. Swan ran the company. He didn't run into the ground. But, you know, when you get a new CEO, you get a lot of excitement. But this is a very big turn that has to happen over multiple years. And, in, right. in, in, and then you know, what are look, um, AMD's got Genoa. It is so far ahead of Intel. Welcome to Electrified. It's your host, Dylan Loomis. So, yes, the new Intel CEO as of February 15th this year is making huge waves, announcing a $20 billion investment investment in two new foundries, the factories for manufacturing semiconductor chips. If you're not familiar with the importance of semiconductors to not just Tesla, but the entire world and many different industries, watch this video if you're interested when you get a chance. And if you remember, Tesla moved from using Nvidia chips to power its infotainment console to using chips supplied by Intel. Remember, hardware 3.0, the FSD computer or chip, is different than the chip used to power the MCU or the media control unit, the main center console. The MCU is the computer that powers the main display and all of the multimedia and user interface features. MCU version 1 was from NVIDIA, the Tegra 3 processor, and then Tesla moved to Intel's Atom E8000 series CPU for MCU version 2. Intel also announced it plans to launch a standalone business unit called Intel Foundry Services that will offer advanced manufacturing capabilities to companies that design chips but don't fabricate the semiconductors themselves. Now I don't want to get carried away here just yet, but this is exactly the Tesla business model. Tesla designs its own chips for full self-driving, hardware 3 and hardware 4 that is in the works, but Tesla does not manufacture these chips. They rely on a company like Samsung to make its in-house design chip in Austin, Texas. Hardware 3.0 uses a Samsung 14 nanometer process. To understand what these numbers mean, check that episode mentioned prior. And we also need to remember this is way bigger than just Tesla in the EV space. The US government is highly interested in shifting the semiconductor manufacturing prowess back to the United States as currently we are heavily reliant on Asia. So remember, Tesla does not operate a fab, which is another name for a foundry. Tesla has been reliant on really the only two main players in the foundry space, TSMC and Samsung. 
Samsung. These are the two companies with manufacturing processes for the 5 nanometer process, one of the most advanced technologies on the planet. So could Intel regain its semiconductor manufacturing prowess and end up providing hardware to Tesla? Yes, it's certainly possible. But I also want to remind all of us that Mobileye, one of the main players in the full self-driving race, an Israeli company, was purchased by Intel for $15 billion in 2017. So would Intel want to provide Tesla the manufacturing operations of its in-house design full self-driving chip? You could argue in circles here saying on one hand, no, Intel is laser focused on Mobileye capturing market share for its technology, or yes, Intel would be wise to diversify in the FSD race and take the profits and revenue from Tesla. It's an interesting debate. And while Tesla did use Intel's Atom E8000, at the end of last year, we learned that Tesla was looking to make another change to its MCU and was planning to move to a chip from Advanced Micro Devices, AMD, using Navi 23. Patrick Shore is a well-known leaker of AMD engineering samples and news. Then, at the end of January this year, he tweeted this diagram that would seemingly confirm Tesla is using AMD's Navi 23 GPU for its entertainment and possibly navigation system as well. And while it's not shown in the diagram, it's possible the infotainment system is still powered by a custom Intel Atom CPU. The AMD Navi 23 GPU was reportedly going to be used in the 2021 refreshed Model S. The Navi 23 GPU has 10 teraflops of performance, which for context is virtually identical to that of the Sony PlayStation 5 console and its semi-custom AMD chip. But more importantly, Navi 23 was supposed to be using a 7 nanometer process, something that Intel has been struggling with for some time. Intel's problems came to a head recently with a delay in its latest 7 nanometer production process that actually followed a similar missed deadline situation for the previous 10 nanometer standard as well. But just yesterday, Intel said the latest manufacturing technique is now progressing well, helped by a simplified process. Pat Gelsinger said in a recent interview, even though the stumble on 10 and 7 was embarrassing for a company like ours, it's fixed. We understand what the problem is. Now, this is very important. Gelsinger also promised a completed design of a 7 nanometer chip called Meteor Lake by Q2 of this year with full production by 2023. He said he expects a two-year global chip shortage, which is roughly the time it will take to build out these new foundries. And Tesla's hardware 4.0 was originally rumored to be manufactured by TSMC in Q4 of this year, which was also going to be a 7 nanometer process down from 14 nanometers for hardware 3.0. Smaller transistors means less power required, lower costs, and increased density. 7 nanometers is not two times as fast as 14 nanometers, but it's a significant step forward. But then we heard that Tesla and Samsung were working on a 5 nanometer chip, and if you remember, only Samsung and TSMC can produce at this level, and Samsung is building a $10 billion foundry in Austin to reach scale by 2024. So yes, it will take a few years for Intel to work itself back into the conversation of being on the cutting edge of foundry production if they can get there at all since TSMC and Samsung are moving targets. But more competition in this space is great for every technology company reliant on the foundry model and possibly more important is the United States not being so reliant on an overseas supply chain. And for the EV movement to keep up with its growth, following the semiconductor space will be vital. We've already seen GM, Honda, Ford, Volkswagen, and even Tesla for a few days have to alter production or shut down plants due to the global semiconductor shortage. And think about what this space will look like in 2025. With every notable auto manufacturer being forced to play in the EV space, where semiconductors are essential to operating smarter vehicles, these shortages could become a recurring issue for certain players. Gelsinger's plan has been met with mixed feedback feedback, but there are many who want Intel to reassert itself into a leadership position. Intel announced it would expand capacity in the US, Europe, and other global locations later this year in addition to the two new plants adjacent to its site in Chandler, Arizona. Intel also has operations in Ireland, Israel, and China. We know China is investing hundreds of billions of dollars to develop its own semiconductor industry, and this has led many to call for United States government support for domestic production. But 
Gelsinger recently said, quote, We are excited to be partnering with the state of Arizona and the Biden administration on incentives that spur this type of domestic investment. But he later noted that Intel would pursue its plan with or without government incentives. So Intel has the capacity to succeed here and to regain market share they had lost because of timidity years ago. Current tensions with China will only strengthen the necessity for Intel and the US government to commit to finding a path forward when it comes to semiconductor manufacturing. Having Pat Gelsinger at the helm of Intel, who has prior software and cloud knowledge from his time as CEO at VMware is something that shouldn't go overlooked. VMware basically develops virtualization software by creating an abstraction layer over computer hardware that allows the hardware elements of a single computer, processors, the memory, and the storage to be divided into multiple virtual computers called VMs. But to wrap things up, this is a bold move from Intel, but one that our country I think desperately needs. It will play out over the course of this decade and there won't be a whole lot of discussion of this space from the EV world until the supply chain problems arise like we've seen in recent months. But this is a very interesting space and as mentioned, it's way bigger than just electric vehicles. But I would love to hear what you guys think. Do you think Intel and Tesla will work together again in the future or is this just a bigger move for the EV space at scale? But please take a second to like this video if you did, I would greatly appreciate it. Until next time.